Assembly Bill 3080 by Assembly Member Alanis and others, an act related to consumer protection. Assembly Member Alanis, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I present to you today AB 3080, which will provide needed protections for our children against exposure to online pornographic material. This bill has had a long journey to get here and has been both bipartisan and bicameral support. Thanks to constructive collaboration between committee staff and my team, who I'm very thankful for, this bill has passed privacy and judiciary committees without any votes against it. We took good amendments in both committees that helped make this bill better, more narrow, and overall a much stronger policy. I want to thank my colleagues, the Honorable Member from Orenda, the Chair of the Privacy Committee, and the Honorable Member from San Jose, the Chair of the Judiciary Committee, for their work and wisdom on this proposal as well. Moving into areas of new policy and uncharted territory can be both challenging and sensitive. That is why staff and I have made an honest effort to reach out to the 79 other offices to discuss and educate this bill and what it does. I have heard very clearly the concerns about privacy and constitutionality, and I take those concerns very seriously. I have also heard a lot of encouraging support from many of you, especially from the strong women in this room who are some of the most respected and influential leaders in this body. I am both thankful and humbled by that support. I sincerely thank those of you who have reached out for your feedback and for the engagement on this very personal bill for me. As a father, as a grandfather, and as a former Crimes Against Children's detective, I can assure you that I want to get this policy right and I want to make sure that we do it the right way. I want to note my conversations with my colleagues in the LGBTQ caucus. Your concerns matter to me, and you have my commitment to continue working on those concerns in the Senate. I do not want this bill to harm your community at all. I have also heard from my colleagues who have First Amendment and privacy concerns. I do not want this bill to fail any constitutional tests. To that end, I'd also like to point out recent deci decisions by the Supreme Court that denied a stay on a far broader age verification law that Texas had upheld on the, in the Fifth Circuit. That denial of the stay against the Fifth Circuit Court has no dissenting opinions attached to it from the Supreme Court. There was another one also recently from another state also, but I don't want to get into all that because this is going to take a while. Despite the apparent health of a much broader Texas law, I remain committed to all of you that I will continue working on the concerns regarding both privacy and free speech. I understand that California is different from the other states that have passed similar laws, and I believe that California requires its own tailored approach. That's why my team and I have worked closely with the staff in both policy committees to craft a workable bill using existing statute that California has long used to protect our children from other types of harm. I want to be clear, this bill is not about harming the adult entertainment industry or attacking those that work for it. This bill is simply about protecting children and the harmful exposure to increasingly available and increasingly violent sexual material online. Again, this is about protecting our kids. This is not a new precedent to ask retailers on consumer spaces to ensure that age-appropriate items or materials are only available to adults. For a long time, we have held retailers to the same standards for the sales of alcohol, tobacco, cannabis, fireworks, and dangerous items for children. I believe that the same standards should exist with the adult entertainment websites. We know there are serious negative effects on young people who are exposed to this type of material who regularly consume it and who become addicted to it at far too young of an age. We also know that the consequences of those effects ripple out, both into future generations and across our entire society. Again, this bill is about protecting our kids. Colleagues, I hope I have earned the reputation in this body for striving to be a consensus builder and working to find common sense solutions that bring people together. Should my bill earn the support today, I promise to further amend this bill in the Senate if needed. If this bill clears the Senate, 
it will come back here in a final form for this body to give its final consideration. I have made this promise to some of our colleagues who have expressed concerns to me, and I will follow through with those promises. I met this week with the lead opposition in my office. Those meetings with the opposition are not just some box that I want to check off. These are serious meetings, and my desired outcome is to make a better bill that we all can be proud to support. If there's any pathway to consensus, friends, I promise you I will work on it. For those of us like myself who have sadly seen firsthand the tragic effects that the status quo has had on society, our families, and on younger generations, doing nothing is unacceptable. We must do something. So I humbly ask that today you once again give me your trust on a politically sensitive issue, which I admit has uncommon alliances on both sides of the political spectrum. I ask that you allow us to continue working so we can bring back to this chamber a final proposal that is the best policy and, again, is to protect our children. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Alanis. Assemblymember Barra Cahan, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in support of AB 3080. Maybe I am the uncommon alliance that was mentioned, but I don't think so. Um, this bill came to committee in a way that, to be frank, when it was introduced, I had concerns about the constitutionality of how broad the definitions were. And I really want to thank the member from Modesto because he worked incredibly closely with both the Privacy Committee but also the Judiciary Committee to really tighten those definitions to do what we felt made it a lot closer to constitutional. And it really is an honor to support this, not just as the legislator from Orinda but also as a mom. For those of us on this floor that have kids that are in the digital age, we know that whether we like it or not, they are likely to be exposed to porn on the internet. When I sent my son off to middle school, one of the other moms warned me that that's what people were looking at on the bus. And I better warn him because even if he wasn't accessing it, other kids would be around him. That is how ubiquitous this is in our children's lives. I'm happy to report he says he's never been exposed to it on the bus. Um, but... It is really critical that we think about this and we realize that when we were growing up, the only way to get this was to go into a store where they would make you show an ID. We made sure that people who were accessing this material were of age. And not only is it something that was just accepted before the internet was the way to access this material, but it is getting more and more dangerous. And just days before we heard this bill in Privacy Committee, the New York Times put out an article that discussed what was an incredibly disturbing finding in research, that 40% of college-age girls are reporting being choked during sexual encounters. And they attribute that to the prevalence of violent pornography in children's lives. That they are young, they are seeing violent pornography, and then they think that that is normal and they are harming their partners. And the, the article went on further to talk about how this is leading to brain damage in our young women. And so the, we may think we just, this is a purity issue, but it goes well beyond that. It is about the safety of our children. It is about making sure that they learn healthy behaviors, they learn it from us, they learn sex ed in school, and that they're not learning it from dangerous content on the internet. And so, you know, I really want to thank the author both for making sure this is constitutional, for protecting our kids, but also for going so far as to work incredibly closely with the privacy community. One of the issues with this has been that people are worried that sharing this information when you are an adult and want to go to one of these sites, which this bill does not ban, um, that it ensures that there is no violation of one's privacy in that encounter. And Europe, which has much stronger privacy laws than our country, has done this. They have found a way to put the verification of your age on your phone. A token is sent to the website without your personally identifiable information. And then you, if you're an adult, can access legal pornography. And so uh, the member from Modesto has gone far to bring that to the committee, to work hard to make sure those are the technologies that we're pursuing through this. And so at the end of the day, I think that it isn't surprising that you have people from opposite sides of the aisle standing up in support of this. Because at the end of the day, if anything is going to bring us together on this floor, 
I hope it is protecting our kids. I believe it is the most important job we have in this body is to keep our communities safe and our most vulnerable communities. And there is nobody more vulnerable than our children. And their access to this in the way they have it today is so dangerous, dangerous for the way that they will interact in the future. And we need to make sure that they get this when they're ready, able to understand, and that we have the ability to ensure that that is the time at which they get to access this um, material. I also want to thank my um, colleague for his partnership with the LGBTQ caucus. As many of you know, um, well before I came to this body, LGBTQ plus rights have been a passion of mine and there is never a chance that I would do anything that would put our LGBTQ plus community at risk and I know the author is committed to that and I look forward to those conversations continuing. Um, and with that, I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Assemblymember Barra Cahan. Assemblymember Hoover, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise as a joint author of this legislation in support. Um, I actually introduced a similar bill last year, and things were still getting worked out in the court system. This year, we have a lot more clarity on the constitutionality of policies like this one. Uh, I want to thank my colleague from Modesto for all of his work that he has done to narrow this bill, to, to make it as workable as possible. And I think my colleague from Orinda really hit it on the head. This is about... Uh, also about supporting parents. Uh, parents, if anyone in here is a parent, uh, they are doing a lot of work to protect their kids from a number of things. And uh, this provides them with the assist that they need to really help protect their kids from adult websites. Um, today, our kids cannot purchase a mature video game. They cannot buy a ticket to an R-rated movie. Uh, this bill simply extends those protections to adult websites. I uh, strongly urge your I vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hoover. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All those vote who desire to vote. All those vote who desire to vote. All those vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll and tally the votes. Ayes 56, noes.